gon' step up for me Make sure my fans stay cause my daughter got it Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my YouTube channel. That channel is Deb Chanel's What Is World, where we do reviews. And I want to thank everybody for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you for all your continued support. But let's get on into this video. I know y'all been waiting because I've been waiting to talk about it. Must see video on today's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 12, Episode 4, titled Love, Marriage, and Sour Peaches. Well, we go right on into the first scene, you know how they do, playing so many different videos at one time on each cast member that they're featuring for today's episode. You got Eva, Shading, Marlo, of course. They're at the Pride uh, Gay Festival up in New York still. You got Cynthia and Nene softly shading each other, uh, doing their individual uh, confession session or whatever. You got Nene, she's thinking a whole... Gay, gay pride parade is all about her. She thinking all the gays done came out, lesbians, transgenders, everybody came out to see just her. She didn't forget that the rest of them were there celebrating their independence as well. <laughs> so I'm like, Nene, they ain't there for you, baby. They there for themselves, okay? You're just supporting them. But she thought the whole parade was uh for her. Is that's what I was really getting from the scene she was showing herself in. Then we got her casually going up to the float, speaking to Noelle. Noelle's thinking like, you know, she's been put on the spot because she know her mom and Nene are both having, you know, conflict issues and stuff of that nature. She don't know which way to go. But, you know, Nene didn't take nothing really hard to her and put on her plate. She's just speaking, saying hi. That was it. And that was cool. Okay. Going on uh, further in the uh, episode we got Portia. She goes back to see her therapist and she's expressing her feelings. And the uh, counselor therapist is asking her, did you go, uh, did you take this like a fast paced uh, relationship? You, you didn't really stop to really get into the meat and potatoes. You just took this relationship totally on a fast pace, a fast street. And at first, Portia was like, oh, not really. I do this, that, and the third. I'm like, Portia, please, just go and spit out the truth. You were going on the man had money, allegedly. You wanted to secure, you know, his company and his baby, and you just threw caution to the wind, and whatever happened, happened. Because both of y'all know about contraceptives, so let's not Beat around the bush, let's not fool one another. You knew, he knew, y'all made a baby, okay? Then nobody want to wrap up, so of course, that's what you're going to get. Either a disease, you're going to contract a disease from them because they've been sexual promiscuous with other women and men or whatnot. So you're going to catch different things such as, you know, sexually transmitted diseases. There's a chance or there's a chance that you can get pregnant. So the odds were out there. Y'all threw closer to the wind. That's how baby girl got here. Okay, let's stop being around the bush and pulling around with that idea. You know, she goes on to tell the uh, therapist Dennis threw their family away and her away because he did all these things probably before she was pregnant and when she was pregnant. And that's just not right. Of course, she talks about uh, being the bigger person. But she she's not. <laughs> she wants to wallow in her self pity for a while. Just is what it is. But you know, um, basically the therapist is saying you gotta take accountability for your actions. It ain't just one sided. And she was exactly right. Okay. Um, Portia's telling the therapist, you know, you know, I I really just have to think about the situation because you know I have to think about PJ's future. And you know, my sidebar. I pretty much want to say, Portia, no, you, 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 no, baby, you have a job, you have several jobs, so it's about whether you're going to take the man back with his cheating, philandering ways, or you're going to be single and raise your daughter accordingly, okay, co-parenting, you don't have to go wishy-washy, you want to go back and forth, but as we know from, um, Currently, in the future episodes we're getting, you're pretty much going to go through therapy and you're going to keep pressing the gas with him and going into y'all future as husband and wife. So we're going to pretty much leave that alone because on the show, 
on today's episode, you were saying the door is bolted. You ain't letting him in. But as we know, that door has been open, closed, open, closed, open, closed. And it's wide open. It's wide open for him to come in anytime he want to come in, okay? We move from that situation. We've got Candy. Candy goes over to see Candy. And Candy, uh, Candy, you know, they having like girl banter or whatnot. They haven't seen each other. They're catching up on this, that, and the third. Candy asks, uh, when is Brooklyn's birthday? Kenya kind of gets thrown off track. Like, why is she asking me when my child's birthday? But she goes on to say November 3rd. And Candy said, well, you know, my baby's coming. Of course, we know her baby, Blaze uh, Tucker, was born on uh, November 22nd. She celebrated this past weekend. And everything is lovely over there at the household. Or we think it is. Okay. But anyway, moving on from that, going back to the um uh, episode. Uh Candy talks to her about being a surrogate and how weird it is and this, that, and the third. And uh she didn't really know um that, you know, when you go into a situation where having a baby, once the baby's there, you know, you kind of get your own feel. It's like everything is kind of cut off. From the surrogate. And I'm like well Ken if you really think about it. If that baby kept holding on to the uh, person that it was being born in. Feelings can start getting attached. The woman may seem like she want to change her mind. Even though you supplied the eggs for her. And she was just the host to carry the body in. You know things like that can happen. So they set up parameters. So when you're going through an adoption or you're going through somebody's carrying your baby, they want less contact. So you can move on with your life. They can move on with their life. And this, that, and the third. It seems like you want to make it a family affair. And everything's cool. With that. Everything's kosher. Just as long as everybody playing the same game. Not you on Monopoly and she on uh, operation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I understand it was weird for you. You were trying to keep everything like a family knit type unit. You will always look at her as someone special because she was able to carry a child that you didn't want to complicate your life and your body with because she was having issues with carrying ACE. So, understood. Moved on from that. It was a, it was a pretty good scene. Uh, then we got Kenny. She talks to Ken about Mark and, you know, how he's been handling things. He's been an alpha male. And Ken says, you know, Kenya, she, in her confessional, she's saying Kenya has become very submissive. Uh, she would like to see Kenya stand up uh, for herself like she do with the ladies and be all broad and brash. You know how she can. So, Mark, no, she ain't no fool. She can't be toyed with or run over. And Kenya was like trying to play like hurt little lamb or something going on. And, um... They brought up a situation where Mark didn't want Kenya to be changing the baby, you know, so much. And this, that, and the third. And Candy was like, she had to tell Mark, you know, let that girl change her baby. She know. But they both were saying that both men, meaning Candy's husband, Todd, and uh, uh, Kenya's husband, Mark, they kind of like always think they know it all. And they don't give the women any respect to think they know a little something about parenthood as well. So they had that one thing in common. I'm like, damn, Candy, you clocking your own tea, honey? Is something brewing over there we don't know about? If you if you getting in Todd's ass about some things? Because <laughs> she goes on to admit to uh, Kenya that her first year with Todd was just wee-wee. I guess she wanted to call it quits, but they stuck it out because they're still together. So that's what marriage is about, give and take. Uh, seeing somebody's other side, their perspective, and, you know, being submissive to a certain degree, uh, and, and trying to work things out amicably. Uh, but moving from there, Candy doesn't, uh, it seems like how I viewed it, it was like, Kenya was setting a plot or setting for Candy to drive on in, like she was pulling her into a scenario that uh, Candy wasn't really quite familiar with. She wasn't knowing all the answers that Candy was leading her, you know, by certain questions she was asked so Candy can respond with a certain appropriate answers. Because it just really felt like I was really thinking from a different perspective. Now, first, Candy wanted us to believe that Mark was this loving, dutiful, 
beautiful man, loved her so much, this, that, and third, they got married, everything was beautiful, they had a beautiful miracle baby, he's been a good father, he's been a good uh, husband, and this, you know, and all that. Now she's trying to make Mark uh, be put out there in social media world, or just the media in general, that he's this alpha male, he's very um, aggressive, he doesn't hold his tongue when you know, he should be a little tactful with words that he say to her that can make maybe be offensive or may demean her in other words. You know, she's like she trying to make him seem like this awful gentleman. I'm like, now how can we go from uh day to night so quickly? So I'm kinda like sitting back and looking and listening to what is not being said. And I'm looking at body language now. So I'm like, is Kenya trying to have Mark play a role where he's seen more so as the aggressor? So Kenya can get sympathy points from social media or people in general, her viewers, her fans. However, they may look at Kenya Team Twirl. She's trying to paint this man in such a negative light that it gives her the audacity to sit there and want to make this man to be out as you know someone that's evil that's you know toxic because she kept using some of the words and candy kept picking them up too doing their little spiel with one another that you know mark can be a little bit mean he could be a little bit abrasive he could be a little just toxic and she don't want her child to grow up into a, a similar situation that she had to grow up into. And I'm like, now, wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. So, I'm actually looking at Kenya with, you know, a very strong side eye. Like, okay, now, first you wanted us to believe this about Mark. And you got a lot of people on board. Because, you know, of course, I'm still standing on my thing that I think is just a contractual agreement. There was no real marriage. This, that, and third. So, y'all know how I stand on it. Even though, you know, some people have given me some things to think about. But now, I'm looking at another side view of she's trying to paint this narrative of bad Mark. At first, he was good Mark for, for so long to when it was good for her. Now we're looking at she painting a picture that Mark is bad and she wants everybody to jump on her bandwagon. But yet in social media, when she's doing interviews, she's going painting a picture that he's this, you know, nice father, nice husband. Just, you know, they going through some changes. Changes. Love changes. Love, that's what love puts you through. But, okay, Kenya, we can't really get, or I can't get on your team because I didn't really see no love to start with. It was just like this whirlwind romance that came out of nowhere. You sat up there dating for a couple of months, or I'll just give you six months, seven months tops. Then you go and get married, and then that don't stop there. You end up getting pregnant in a in a quick, fast, and a hurry way. Now we're looking at a divorce. So I'm like, then we're looking at separation where you want to get back with him. But then you painting this negative narrative on him that he ain't worth the salt, or he ain't even worth the body he's dwelling in. Kind of a storyline you're trying to pin on this brother so i'm like nah let me take some things back so i won't be bashing mark or just saying mark don't want her no more because like i said he did he want her in the beginning he wanted the contract he probably wanted the money she was gonna pay him but he didn't want all this hoopla surrounding whether it's a good marriage to be in or it's a bad marriage to be in or how she's portraying him because he does have to have an image when he leaves this platform, if they do, in fact, get divorced, okay, on paper, which I don't, you know, like I said, I don't know how you can have a divorce when you really have a marriage, but that's just my opinion, okay? But, yeah, they going, her and Candy are going back and forth real strong about, you know, the mans or the men in their lives and how they're trying to be domineering. And Candy throwing her little stuff in there about Todd and his ways and about him being Wanting to be right all the time about the children and the raising of the children. You know, like she don't know nothing. So they kind of had that same camaraderie with each other. But moving on to there, we go to Cynthia and Eva. They're arriving at a restaurant in New York called Tayo, Tayo, whatnot. Cynthia tells Eva Marlowe is coming and she's joining them. 
uh, you was not really feeling that situation, but you know, she said, okay, but when she come, I'm gone. <laughs> and I'm like, see ya, wouldn't want to be you, Miss Eva. Uh, then we got sent it saying, you know, Marlo invited her to dinner because, you know, she brought, you know, she wanted to discuss more than likely Nene in that situation. And so she wanted to bring Eva on, you know, I guess in case Nene wanted to show up with Marlo. Who knows? But it just is what it is. Then we got sent this being shady with Eva, you know, towards Marlo saying, you know, I don't know what she want to say. She team Nene, so what's she going to come at me for? You know, I'm like, sit this for your role. I know you're trying to play this uplifting person that wants to have her own personality, her own say now, but it's kind of being a bit overdone. You know, it's how you get your meat, you want it well done, but somehow it ends up getting burnt. That's what you're giving to us, Cynthia, or to me. That's how you're trying to come off of me, trying to feel like I feel like you're trying to prove something so fast and in a hurry to where it's just ain't believable. Like, this is not your personality because I've watched you for several seasons. And now you're trying to come off as the girl that get people told. And it's just not working out for you, at least not right now. Just grow on me with it because you're pushing me too fast and you're just ending up in a negative right now. Well, I've got you back on the couch and you and got duct tape over your mouth. Okay, we're moving on from that. Um... And she's also expressing with Eva that Marlo don't even really check Nene when Nene's wrong and stuff of this nature. But, oh, my, how the tables have turned because she, that's going to be a pretty much false statement as the episode uh, continues to go on. Um, <clears throat> as soon as Marlo finally shows up at the restaurant, look at all classy, as uh, she usually is in fashion, Lisa, going on Eva... Uh, leaves abruptly you know she said well maybe some of that duck sauce that's on eva's plate or whatnot and um he was looking like well i don't really want to but since you said it nicely i guess i'll go on and leave you some but she does get up from the table she nice nasty shading well they both shade each other pretty much and it just it is what it is and uh eva definitely calls herself uh, going downstairs to finish up her little light um, supper or dinner that she's having. Okay. Then we got Marlo is saying Eva is, you know, talking with Cynthia about if she bisexual. She ain't admitted to that. She's a liar. She's broke. She's been moving from house to house to pillow to post. And, then, you know, she's a troubled woman. And she's trying to warn Cynthia about her. But, you know, of course, Cynthia ain't listening to nobody. Marlo tells Cynthia she's taking care of her uh, sister's kids. They call her Monty, meaning auntie and mom all in one. And, you know, Cynthia is commending her for, you know, stepping in and not letting the children go to the state. It's that third. Showing a positive light on Marlo. Cynthia's digging it. Then Marlo is asking about uh, <clears throat> Noelle and her coming out or being fluid or this new acceptance of her liking women at this time and, and, and feeling her environment and her sexuality. And she commends Cynthia for being a mom of understanding and, you know, all that good stuff and not showing out on her child and telling her child, no, you shouldn't be doing this. No, you shouldn't be feeling this way. No, you shouldn't be in that sexuality type of uh, demeanor or that gender. Just not being negative toward the child, but understanding what the child is going through, what she's you know, hearing her fluently and, 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 and making decisions for the positive for their relationship as well. Then I said to talk to Marlo about Nene, uh, shade her on TV and uh, Marlo said, well, hell, you did the same thing too. I wish both of y'all would have kept it off social media and, and, and called each other and talked about it like adults. So, you know, I was like, go ahead, Marlo. I'm liking what you're giving me, girl. Where can we give you your peach? Woo! Because, honey, how you ran Nene out of that restaurant. I was like, okay, now see, that's what an HBIC do. We don't run from nothing. We sit up there and make our opinions or express ourselves uh, however we feel that we deem we want to. And we don't clear the house. Well, we might clear the house, but we don't leave until we get ready to leave. And we ain't uh, leaving no stone unturned. We're going to finish the conversation. We're going to 
eat our food or have it to go. We're going to take our drink with us if we must. If not, we're going to finish it. And we're going to say, well, I'll see you all next time. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Y'all all have a good night. And then that's when the old she gets up and walk out. But we don't run. So we're going to we're gonna take Nene's play card, uh, HBIC head queen in charge card, because you don't go out like that. You set the tone. You set the environment of how things are supposed to go. You follow through. You don't run. You don't run because it gets too hot. You just feel like you're not being heard. No, you continue to reemphasize, reiterate until the people get it. And then when you don't got tired or whatever, like I said, you, you, you give your pleasantries all the way around and then you excuse yourself. It ain't nobody saying, you know, running after you and this, that, and third. You just tap their hands or get them a kiss on their cheek or forehead or whatever. Say, okay, I'm leaving now. <laughs> This conversation has to be had again if we need to bring it back up at another time. Let's book it. Let's put, put each other on the schedule. See what we can do a week from Friday. You know, something like that. Set up something else. But uh -huh, we're going to get to Nene's part where she plays for the negative and we had to take her player card or her uh, HBIC card because she wasn't representing tonight at all. She was just getting her feelings and then her emotions be all about her instead of showing who she is and standing up for what she believes and, you know, whatever. But anyway, we go to Census uh, saying why should she always had to take the high road. Why she can't set up for herself, you know, this time of all times. And, you, you know, and I, I, I would agree with Marla. Well, you don't kiss the ass this long. You might as well continue to kiss that ass until we can really unresolve, get this thing resolved in some way. <laughs> Since we were like, uh-uh, I'm tired of kissing the ass. It ain't going to be like that. We're going to run it the way I want to run it. And like I said, I'm kind of trying to be that for Cynthia, but she's just giving it to me too fast. And it's just not believable that she can stand on her own. Okay, because when Nene did approach her, you know, on the slope, she was really talking to Noel. You know, it wasn't like Cynthia was giving me anything of, of authority ship. Okay, no authority was there. So I was like, mm -mm, you ain't ready yet, Cynthia. Just put back on your uh, mouthpiece where it's taped up, and I'll call you when I think. I may want to put you in, but right now you're still riding the bench. Uh, then we've got Marla is calling out Nene and Cynthia for their behavior. And she's saying, look, girls, you know Nene how long? And then you over here hanging tight with Eva. And you know her how long? But a minute, a day and a half, maybe. Uh, she's like, what you doing? Uh, how you going to try uh, to make, you know, yourself align with Eva? And you've been more in a longevity type relationship with Nene. Where, where's all that coming from, Cynthia? And she's like, girl, please. I, 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 I don't understand where you're coming from. And you hanging with Eva, you are already still on a losing team. Okay. She, she was more so like, drop that zero and come on and get with a hero. <laughs> and we move on from that situation. We go to Porsche. Porsche's getting ready to take PJ to work with her. First day back at Dish Nation. And I'm like, Ugh. Flag on play. Where is Miss Diane? Why is Portia gathering up all she can possibly gather up? Unless it was just like a uh, radio personality plug, you know, bringing up their ratings or this, that, or I, I don't know. But my whole thing is Cynthia, that baby, I'm not Cynthia, Portia, that baby had no reason, not nowhere in this God green earth to follow you to work at her age. I mean, I can see if it was bringing your children to kids, uh, kids to work to see what mommy do, to see if she, they want to aspire and do the same job. Maybe when they get old, it's time for them to work. But girl, you had your mama Diane at home to babysit you could have been hired a nanny or a caregiver to do whatever you needed the child to do i mean mothers do it every day all day long when it comes to somebody watching their kids while they go out to work i mean it's like the beginning of time uh of course i don't know where you coming from with this shit but yeah, I didn't like that whole scene because I'm like, you act like you ain't got nobody on your team. Hell, Lauren ain't even working nowhere. She could have watched the baby. But hell, y'all could have got this whole baby situation, nanny situation taken care of before y'all even start taping. I mean, good God, Cynthia. I mean, Portia, that was just too much. Um, Because I'm like, Diane, from what I'm understanding, what you're telling us, she's been now with you from day one after this whole debacle meant 
or unraveledness coming with your relationship with Dennis, she over there living with you primarily. So I'm like, why can't she watch the baby? Don't she have some tips or some people that can definitely uh, be seen or deemed worthy to watch baby PJ? Okay, or better yet, what is... Uh, I'm not going to call that man Michael. Uh, Dennis doing. He don't know nobody. I mean, he don't know a whole lot of women. So I'm sure they have somebody they, they know that he could use as a sitter of some sort. But like I said, it's made for TV. Got to have him spin. Moving on for now, we got Nene and Marlo having lunch together. And at some boat club, whatever, Nene already getting on some kids that's out there cussing on the lake. And she thinking she's being disrespected and this, that, and third. But Marlo finally shows up. They toast to health and wealth. And Marlo wants to throw friendship in there. Nene's like, uh-uh, we ain't talking, we ain't talking no friendship. <laughs> I'm like, Nene, that's just horrible. Horrible, girl. You don't got that rich that you don't need allies. You don't need friendships. You don't need some type of uh, people in your corner that can vouch for you and yours. Like, girl, you're doing too much. Okay. Then we got Marla goes in. She starts shading Eva, Marcel, talking about the whole events that took place or transpired when they were up in New York. Um, when she had lunch prior to coming back to Georgia with Eva, or really Cynthia. And, you know, she's telling Nene all the cup of teas that was being dropped. And she wanted to make sure she got her cup full of it. Marlo tells Nene about they were talking about her, and Nene says, why were y'all discussing me? You know, I'm like, come on, Nene, don't, don't act. Oh, y'all already had this shit planned out, so you know what was going to be dropping down. But Nene Lee breaks down into her confessional session, like, okay, uh, Nene, you know, like, she, you know, she crying and carrying on because she thinks she's just so tore up over her lack of a friendship with Cynthia and it's just got to be too much where she got choked up and wanted to cry like girl please moving on from that situation we got Nene asked Marlo how it ended meaning the whole dinner and what was discussed what resolutions came up um and the conversations that were had and ended Marlo tells Nene girl I told her you both were wrong period it should have been something handled off social media Nene told Marlo to just stay out of it. It's a very personal situation, just strictly between her and Cynthia. But see, Nene just really didn't want nobody to tell her she was wrong and that she needed to apologize. And I, I'm like, kudos and bravo for Marlo for telling both of them on camera that both y'all should have handled this a little bit better. But anyway, it is what it is. We go on, Marlo tells uh, Nene Cynthia does deserve an apology. And of course, that struck the wrong chord in Nene's larynx. <laughs> She's like, apologize well. Who? Who gonna do that? You know, acting all dumbfounded or whatnot. Marlo is telling Nene, girl, you crazy. And Nene's like, oh, you crazy. <laughs> and she just got tired of Marlo talking about she need to give Cynthia an apology. She was wrong. This, that, that. You know, Nene would get all up in her feelings, not acting like an HBIC. That's why I took a call. So I'm like, girl, girl, she walks out on Marlo. Marlo pretty much, I'm like, who paying for the dinner? Who paid for the lunch? Did it get paid for? Or Nene just skip it out on the tab as well. And see, that ain't HBIC material. No, that's not. That's what Guinea why I snatched her car. But anyway, she goes to try to call herself running out the Nene. Nene done got into her little uh uh bicycle carriage where it's something like they in Paris or somewhere. <laughs> but it's some little place where they spin you off in a little uh bicycle type um uh carriage ride or something. And Marla goes holly, come back here, Nene, come back here, Nene. I'm like, man, please. And once she left me at that table, that's where we would end it. I would tape it. I wasn't gonna run out the Nene. No. Not in my nice outfit, nice outfit, and it was hot out there too. Uh, um, you could kick rocks with no shoes on. All right, then we go to Candy. Candy takes Ace and um, Todd to the hospital to Dr. Jackson's office to see Shadina, Shadonna, the surrogate woman that's uh carrying Candy's dumb baby. Uh, and Ace is the cutest little thing. He's trying to say, "Oh, I saw my baby sister on the uh the picture, or you know, on the little sonogram machine." And he was just excited, and you know, it was very nice. I, I kudos to everything. Uh, and like I said, Candy wasn't too much understanding of the birthing process, how everything is separated once that child comes out of the body. They were trying to discuss who's gonna cut the cord, 
Uh, Dr. Jack was explaining to them that they're going to definitely have to go into another room and get familiar with the baby. Just that third can like, what? We got to do that? Really? Okay. And this is crazy. So Ace was cool with that. Um, they were leaving the office in Kenya, Texas, Candy. Candy feels that, you know, she really has to go see what's going on with Kenya. Kenya seems to be a little disturbed, a little distraught. And, you know, of course, Todd trying to get a little bit more information, but it's like, man, you get in women's business, take that baby home or go do whatever y'all got to do it, hang out with each other, but candy bounced, okay? Then we got Portia, she goes to work, finish her day, Lauren's there, I don't know if that's Lauren's assistant or Portia's assistant, but whatever, they go and talk about how they had a good day, this, that, and the third, and I'm like, Portia should have left that baby at home, you should have went back to work, put on your big girl panties and keep it moving, okay? But that was, you know, all I had for that. They could have really kept Portia out this whole segment of this episode. But it is what it is. Then we got Kenya. Uh, she's assisting her nanny. The nanny is holding the baby. Candy shows up over her house with gifts and salutations and all this kind of stuff. They go in to talk and Candy trying to figure out why she really there. Because it seems like Ken, I mean, Kenya's in good spirits. Why does she make this? Uh, call to her like it's a 911 thing, and then she's smiling, laughing, and carrying on. They in there talking about breast reductions and this, that, and the third. I'm like, oh, now y'all tired of carrying them big boobies around that y'all enlarge yourself. Now y'all want to reduce them. Really, is that what we do? Okay, but moving on from there, um, Candy and Kenya talks about you know their husbands and this, that, and the third. Kenya goes in to say between six and seven months, her and Mark stopped having intercourse. And um, they never picked the intimacy back up or the sex back up after the baby was born. Candy said, well, okay. I mean, Candy said, well, okay, we went through that. But as soon as I dropped the baby, I got healed and all like that. Uh, We got back. We got busy. And she said to Candy, meaning Kenya, you know, it never got back up. <laughs> and she goes on to say that uh, their one-year anniversary uh, trip that they were supposed to have been taking together. Mar wanted the baby to come. She didn't want the baby to come unless the nanny was going to come so they could have some alone time. Mark was totally against the trip. He said, well, if the nanny got to come, then we ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. So Candy was looking at him like, why do you want the uh, nanny not to come? Y'all need to have y'all alone time. He's like, well, damn, what's going on with that? So you, she's like, I'm surprised you even went by yourself. On your anniversary, you took the baby. And, you know, Candy was looking at her like she was crazy, too. Like, well, who does that, baby? Because <laughs> I damn sure wouldn't do it. But anyway, we all know, hell, she took, uh, what's her name? Brooklyn to Paris uh, by herself with probably her entourage or whatnot. So, I don't know. Can you, I think Kenya just made up this uh, lie that she's trying to get out of. And it's just being taped. And none of it really makes any sense. And all of us catching up with her. But it just is what it is. Because like I said, she was trying to pull Candy into the scenario. But Candy like, I don't know too much about this scenario. About just a little bit. And I'm not saying it's all that. Candy like, uh-uh, you ain't finna pull me that far in, baby. Because I don't know. I'm just only going by what you're telling me. Then, you know, um, we leave that situation. We got Kenya talking about uh, lines being crossed. And Candy saying, your mom call you out your name, girl. And I'm like, okay, is that that attention for thing that we're talking about? And Candy says she knows about being called out there now. I'm like, girl, who called you out your name, Candy? They talk, call you out your name. What, Mama Joyce? <laughs> and then, so can you start crying, you know, leaving the area? And Candy don't really know what to do to go chase after the stay in the area or what. Uh, and then they go up talking, they start talking back about, you know, Ma don't want to compromise and this, that, and the third. It's just, then she started comparing Candy and Ma to be kind of the same type of person. You know, real hard-headed, don't want to compromise, this, that, and the third. Like, okay, uh-huh. Uh, but like I said, Candy's trying to paint Mark in this very vengeful, crazy type, neurotic type person. And, you know, Candy's saying, you know, her first year was hard. You know, it's a lot of egos going on. She even had some ego blows to Todd. Um... Uh, uh, and you know, she was saying Todd had a problem with cutting her off when she, they were getting into an argument or whatever. She ain't like that. She had to, you know, dig into his behind about treating her with respect, and she will be finishing her sentences and he will hear her. Okay, that's Candy. She's roaring over there. Go ahead, girl, do your thing. Uh, then Candy says, Marcus, like, you know, 
he's just a changed person. He has these different alter egos and this, that, and the third. And she is saying she was uh she would she she always wanted to protect her daughter because she was in a situation where nobody protected her. And I'm like, girl, okay, what you talking about, girl? I think you need to go sit on somebody's couch and just, you know, relax, relate, and release some stuff. And she goes on to say, you know, the relationship is just toxic. And Candy playing it all through her mind. Like, damn, how toxic this shit here? You talking about it's toxic for you and your daughter? But especially mm. for your daughter, what is going on, King? So, see, King is dropping all this tea. And we don't know if it's really true or not. It's just something she's trying to paint in people's minds. And trying to, you know, get this narrative going on more. And like I said, I'm about to step back and look at the situation from a fresh pair of eyes and a fresh pair of ears because I don't think it's all what Kenya is really giving us is the correct information. I think she's trying to plant something in our heads and our hearts to believe that Mark is this kind of negative, uh, really contrite type person. And I don't think it's all what Kenya is really saying is true or factual. So, but that's all I had of this wonderful, salacious uh, storyline of love, marriage, and sour peaches, okay, for episode 12, I'm sorry, season 12, episode 4 for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. All right, talk to y'all again real soon. Bye-bye.